Hey, it's Mark here. I'm getting ready to build a barn quilt. I'm gonna make it four foot by four foot. I'm gonna use a star shade quilt pattern. And I thought this might be something that other people would find interesting just to learn about, or if it's something you already do. Um, I hope you enjoy this series of videos. So let's get started on this fun project. Just giving a quick look at the materials I'm starting out with for the barn quilt. I have a 4x4 half inch sheet of plywood, some 2x2 lumber to build a frame for the back. Also three colors of paint, red, green, and yellow. Some caulk to caulk edges and cracks. Also some wood putty to fill in any screw holes where I attach the plywood to the frame. Paintbrush, frog tape, straight edge, square, and a ruler and a pencil. So for my 2x2 two two boards I'm using for the frame on the back, I cut this joint so that when I overlap them in the corner, they would only be like a screw holding them together, but also kind of a physical joint where they made up. And so I plan on putting some small amount of liquid nails along with uh, wood screw, exterior wood screw, through the joint to hold it together. There's a lot of ways we could put this frame together and then attach it to the plywood, but I decided to um, clamp the top and bottom of the frame to the plywood and align the frame together and equally space it out on the plywood, the sheet of plywood since, you know, nothing's 100% perfectly square. And that way I can get even spacing and I'll just uh, put some liquid nails and a screw in each corner. I'll drill a hole and also pre-drill the hole and also countersink the hole so that the screw will be below the surface. Before attaching the frame with screws, I'd went around the edges on all four sides and just evenly spaced the frame just inside the edge of the plywood. And the clamps are holding the top and bottom of the frame in place. I have a short drill bit and I checked it to make sure it won't drill through the face of the plywood since I'm drilling from the back side. After drilling the hole, I'm going to also put a countersink in it. And I'm pre-drilling these holes because in my past experience, it seems like if you drill it, if you put a screw towards the end of a board and you just run the screw through without a pre-drilling that hole, a lot of times the wood will split on the end of the board. This countersink bit is not uh, very sharp. I'm either going to have to sharpen it or get me a new one. Seems like uh, drill bits and things like that, they don't last that long anymore.
So just going to repeat this process, um, patching the other corner on this side with screws. I'd already put the liquid nails in the joint. And then I'll move to the other side and do the very same thing to the opposite side. So this board was lifted up on the other, on the other end. I only have four small clamps. If I'd have had um, eight small clamps or at least six, I would have clamped off the side boards while I was attaching them. But it worked out in the end. Now I'm going to clean up my tools and remove everything off the top of here so I can turn this barn quilt over. And then I'm going to put the screws in the face that will attach the plywood to the frame around all four sides. Now that I have the frame evenly spaced and attached with clamps to the, or the sheet of plywood, I'm going to drill some holes, countersink those, so I can put some screws around all four sides. Countersinking these holes will allow me to fill them in with wood putty and then sand them off afterwards so we have a smooth surface. So here's a close-up of the countersunk screw. It may take a second pass with the putty if they don't come out perfectly smooth the first time. If there are any other, you know, like cracks or say there's a small knot somewhere, probably put some putty in that too. And then we'll just go over the whole thing to sand it um, and clean up that putty once that dries. So this edge of the plywood, since it is multiple layers, it has those cracks all on the edge. Since this is likely to be outside, I'm going to take some caulk and seal those edges of the plywood and also the gap between the plywood and the frame. And this is going to prevent water from getting in there and doing as much damage or at least reduce the amount getting in. Just the idea is to make it last longer since it's going to be outside in the weather. I should have went and got a sponge and a bucket of cold water. Anytime you're working with any kind of caulk or silicone, it's a handy way to clean off the surface after you apply it. Since the barn quilt will likely be outside, I uh, felt like it was a good idea to go ahead and seal the surface where the frame meets the plywood. Just another way to keep water from getting behind there and causing damage.
When I turned this um, barn quilt over to silicone the back, I could see the edge of where the plywood meets the frame on the side better. I found a few places there that I didn't fill in very good. So I went back and touched those up so it's siliconed all the way around the, between the plywood and the frame now. And so now I'm going to let this dry. And the next thing I'll have to do once this dries up is I'm going to sand off the putty that I filled in all the screw holes. Also just probably sand that paint off the front where they mark the plywood with the part number and the manufacturer name. So I let the putty and the caulk dry overnight. And I got some 120 grit sandpaper on this hand sander, so it shouldn't take too long. So here you can see a few of these nail holes. Those are puttied and sanded over. Well, so now that we got our barn quilt sanded, the next thing will just be to clean it off with the cloth, get it ready for the first coat of paint. So what I'll end up doing is, in the first coat of paint, use the primary color, and then I'll lay out the design of the quilt pattern over top of that primary color and then I'll be able to, after that tape off and um, paint in you know each subsequent color I just have the three colors I'm going to use so looking forward to getting started painting so I thought about it more and changed my mind about the first coat I would paint I decided not to use any of my three primary colors I'm just using another white acrylic paint for exterior and the reasoning behind that is um, it doesn't matter what color the back is. It just needs to be protected from the weather. And the other thing is, is on the front side, I was thinking um, I'm kind of colorblind. So it'd be a lot easier for me to see the pencil lines on a white background than on one of the other colors. So that's why I decided to go ahead and just give the first coat as a white paint. And I'm going to paint the back side with two coats. And then I'll just paint the front side with one coat of this color because on the front, it'll get the colors a couple times painted over top of that. And here I'm putting the second coat on the back. A little nicer day, so I thought I'd move outside. The day before it was uh, too windy to be outside. This would no doubt be faster using a paint roller but I checked in my garage, don't seem to have any paint pan liners or paint roller sleeves. And I just have a little bit of time between after work and dark before, you know, the sun goes down. So I don't want to waste the 45 minutes driving down to the hardware store and getting back. If you're doing this, you might find it a lot faster if you have a uh, paint roller handy. Or if you just want to relax doing some hand painting. You can just stick with a brush. Uh, we're inside in, with the pandemic so much and don't get to do too much stuff. So maybe this is good for the soul. And now I'm just going to put one coat of paint on the front uh, to give me a nice background to draw my lines on to give a nice contrast between the pencil color and the paint. In the next video, I'm going to talk about my pattern I chose some more and also show you how I transferred that to a sheet of paper just to confirm the proportions of it in the measurements so I could transfer it to this 4x4 sheet of plywood. And then I plan to mark off this barn quilt to get it ready to start painting the different sections. So I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the next one. Thanks.